markup for our graph is finished, but let's see how we can take that markup and turn it into something visual for sighted users. So we just have some basic styling here. I'm going to go ahead and copy my flag so that we can separate this out a little bit. And this is going to be the styling for our graph. So I'm just going to create some space here. And first we'll go ahead and style our anchor tags. We want them to be kind of a bluish color, not quite the browser default. And we'll increase their font size. And we want to remove the underline underneath them, which is the text decoration. And next we want to style the graph, which is our UL. And we want to first remove all the padding from that. We'll give it a pretty wide width of about 25 M's. We'll float it to the left. And we want to put a border on the bottom of it. And you'll see why in just a second here. And next we want to style the list items in our graph. And I'll create some more space here for us to work. And in the list items, I'm going to position those relative. I'm going to give them a list style of none. And I'm going to put a border on top of each one of the list items. And that's why we put the border on the bottom of the graph. And finally, I'm going to style the anchor tags just a bit more. And I'm going to give them display block. I'm going to give them some padding. We need to position them relative. And I'm going to give them a Z index of about 100. So that way the text will actually appear on top of our bar graphs, which we'll put in later. So if I switch back and refresh, you can see that this is starting to look like the final chart. Obviously, we need to hide these percentages and we still need to put in our bars. So let's go ahead and move along here. Next, we want to give some kind of indication that these bars are actually links that theoretically would link to more information about each one of the fruits. So I'm going to add a hover class here. And when we hover over, we're just going to change the background color. So when I refresh, you can see that we now have a nice little hover state there. And moving on, we're going to go ahead and style the bars finally, which we gave the class percentage. So we're going to go ahead and select those. And we'll give them a height of about 100 pixels. We'll give them a background color that's a slightly different blue than our link color. These also need to be display block. And we need to position these absolutely so that they don't kind of slide around or anything like that. And we're also going to give a text indentation of we'll say 20,000 pixels. Now this is an interesting trick here, this text indent, because it's actually going to move that percentage off the screen so that the text percentage won't actually be visible to sighted users. They'll only see the bar. But if a screen reader is moving through the markup, they will see that percentage. This is, of course, assuming that we don't have monitors that are 20,000 pixels wide. If we do, I think we have bigger problems. So let's go ahead and refresh. And there you can see our percentages are now gone. And we now have these really nice bars. Now, if we switch back to our text editor for just a second, and we go ahead and widen our graph from, say, 25 M's to 50 M's, you can see that the style attribute we put in line into the code to determine the percentage width of these bars is coming into play because we can actually rescale this graph and the bars will rescale appropriately. So I'm just going to switch back and I'm going to go ahead and change that back to 25 M's. And we're just going to finish this up because one thing we did do is we hid our totals. So we need to bring those back out and we need to give them a little bit of styling. So I'm just going to give them a nice dark color here. I'm going to give them a font weight of bold. They need to be display block. And we need to absolutely position them because we're going to go ahead and put them on the right side of the graph. And finally, we need to give them some line height 
so that they don't stick to the top of the list items. So when we save and refresh, you can see that we now have our totals over here on the right. And there we have it. Now the charts and graphs in your web app are probably more application specific, but as you've just seen, there are ways of making them accessible.